Yeah, yeah. What's going on, everybody? Yo, it's your boy T. Till. Conversations of the heart. I think we're up to episode 20. Um, this is the Money Management Series, part two, with Joel. Um, so we're just going to wait for him to tap in here um, so we can have this, this type of conversation. Um, and this podcast will be available on Anchor as well and Spotify and a bunch of other different podcasts uh, coming up uh, this month. Um, so stay tuned for that. And my guy is here. Let me get him in here. Yes, sir. We back. Listen, um, you know, I think with this one, you are officially, you are the one that has been on this show the most. Good, good, good. <laughs> but I, I was like, oh, I said, yo, I said, this is a regular thing. I, I appreciate you doing this with, with me, bro. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, this, man. I'm completely blaming you for all of this, and I'll keep doing it when you're famous. I don't <laughs> man, oh, man. Um, pre- appreciate you doing this, man. Um, so this is a part of the Money Management Series, um, part two, uh, focusing on debt management and uh, credit score maintenance. Um, so first off, man, let's just start off with uh, how are you feeling, man? You feeling good? You all right? Yeah. Yeah, moving and shaking, man, working hard. I mean that's really that's really what this thing's about, man. I mean, being mm-hmm. positive, and mm-hmm. I think sometimes people forget we're really in a pandemic. Like I think I think I don't know if that happens to people, but that really does mm-hmm. happen. To me. You come outside and be like, oh shit, I gotta put on a mask. Yeah, you know? sometimes I forget my mask and I have to go back in the house, bro. I'll be tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, no, I'm good. I'm good. No, no complaints. Dope, man. Um, so. I see that you've been putting out a bunch of videos and I really want to encourage everybody to go um, on his page at CFA Joel and really go check out his videos and what, and, and what he's been saying. Um, if you're young and especially get ahead on this, you know, yeah. Nikki, Nikki, what's up? This is for you. You are young. If get this money talk right now, you young, get this money talk. Um, go to CFA Joe's page and watch some of his videos. They're amazing and inspiring. You know, they'll change your life, get you on the right path. So, so with, so with that said, man, so let's get it going, man. So where do you want to start, man? Um, debt management, credit score. Uh, what do you want to start with, brother? So maybe let's start with um, the concept of debt, right? So I yes, want sir. everybody who watches this live or later on, I told Terrence right before this, this is something I am extremely passionate about. So I will curse. I will get angry. Um, <laughs> I am to be polite about this in any circumstances. And neither should, you know, most people. Mm-hmm. So think about how our society is set up. Our right. society is set up in such a way that mm-hmm. we somehow think debt is normal. Mm-hmm. Somehow owing people money in your life is normal. Mm-hmm. How is that possible? Think about every major religion. We'll start there. Every major religion, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, doesn't make a difference which one you choose. Not one of them says it's mm-hmm. a good idea. Not one. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, regardless if people are agnostic of religion, think about this for a second. Some of these books are written thousands of years ago mm-hmm. right you talk you listen to someone like a dave ramsey for example he tells you psalm 22 7 right he tells you the debtor is slave to the lender where does that come from it comes from psalms it comes thousands of years ago mm-hmm. and somehow we think thousands of years later we got it we can figure it out Right. So we have to understand that debt in particular is what puts the stranglehold around black people. And I use that like literally. Right. I mm-hmm. really do think that debt is economic slavery, period. Mm. Think about what it prevents you to do. It prevents you to save. It prevents you to invest. It prevents you to tithe. What else do you call it? 
Think about when slavery was around. It prevented you from li- to doing what you wanted to do. It prevented you right. from living. Prevented you from getting an education. That's modern day slavery. It just so happens mm. that now it's colorless. Mm. It just so happens. Mm. And if you look at debt in particular and how much it affects black people, minorities mm-hmm. in particular, it's one of the number one reasons why we never move forward. How is this possible? How is it that we've right. always been in a situation where we borrow money? So for example, you use your credit card to buy things. They mm-hmm. told you, you need to use your credit card to build the credit score. Well, no one mm-hmm. ever told you to keep a balance. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. No one ever told you. <laughs> Everyone mm-hmm. told you you need to go to school. No mm-hmm. one ever told you to borrow money to do so. Mm-hmm. You may live in a rural area. Let's say you don't live in New York. You live in Atlanta, for example. You can't take the bus in Atlanta. It takes 10 years to get everywhere. Right? You need a car. No one told you you have to borrow debt to get a car. Mm. And the largest one, right, is to buy a house. Everyone says you need to have a mortgage. It's almost crazy Mm -hmm. now for someone to say, no, I bought a house all cash. So that is a reality. And I think that's something that we have to, like, get better at, is understanding why does debt put us in such a severe hole in the beginning of our lives, such that we carry around debt like a pet for the next 30 years. So, so with that, I know you said one of the biggest things is, is, you know, buying a house, but, and B night said it too. I was going to go there next student loan debt. Yes. Serious. Yes. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's really real. Um, and unfortunately when you come out of, you know, student loan debt and things like that, your salary doesn't, for a lot of people, their salary does, does, has nowhere near equates. To be to being able to pay off, yes, that debt with the interest and, and, and everything like that. But people will say, society will say, like it's it's all worth it. It's all it'll all be worth it in the end, right? Yep. Just like buying a house, it'll all be worth it in the end. It's yours, yep. things like that. So, what do you say about student loan debt? I've had it. The key word yeah. is had. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the key word. I had it. Now, I am well aware that the average tuition when you come out is closer to 80 to 100 grand in debt when you come out. I am well aware that you come out owing damn near six figures by the time everything's done. I am not saying that that's not true. What I am saying is it doesn't give you an excuse to hold on to it. Mm. That's what Mm -hmm. I'm saying. What I'm saying is you don't have the luxury as a black person in this country to carry around that much debt. So if you come Mm -hmm. out of and you're making 40 grand, 50 grand, you still need to be actively trying to pay down that debt. You know what the issue is though? The issue is you don't see progress. You know what you Mm -hmm. see progress on? Buying a car. You see progress on popping a bottle. You see progress on popping tags. You see progress Mm -hmm. on clothes. You see progress on going on a date. But the one thing you never see progress on immediately is the student loan. But that should not be a reason why you don't try to push and pay it off. Mm-hmm. One of the smartest things I did mm-hmm. when I moved, when I was in my mother's house and after I graduated from um, doing my MBA, I stayed home. Mm-hmm. I stayed home in my mother's basement, okay, in the prime of my 20s because I wanted to pay off that debt. Do you know how many people around me bought new cars and had new places and apartments? Do you know how much I was losing out here? I look like a herd. <laughs> Straight up, mm-hmm. I look like a complete idiot. Until because now. <laughs> everybody, everybody out here is having a great old time and looking fresh and doing all these things. And I'm out of here driving, you know, a beat up car, et cetera, et cetera. And then when I moved, I moved with no debt. Mm. Fast forward a couple of years later, I caught up pretty quickly and then took off. Right. Right. So that's the key. The key was it took me a couple of years to actively pay off and stay home. Some people don't have that option to do that, right? Some people right. have to out earlier, whatever the case is. I'm mm-hmm. saying there's no excuse. Get out of debt, get out of debt, get out of debt. You're, and it's not going to be sexy. 
No one's going to see it, but you got to do it. And I also think, though, and, and you could tell me uh, what you think about this sometimes, and, and maybe in, in a, a lot of times people see school also as a fad or a thing to do. Yes. And, um, and the type of school. Oh, my, oh, my brother. Cheers, bro. We oh, forgot yeah. that, brother. Yeah, okay. Cheers to you, brother. Dude, so <laughs> that's what we do. So, um, so, and even the type of school that you go to, because there are schools that don't have to cost as much as others, uh, obviously, right? And, and so people tend to go to, you know, certain schools, you know, and they're going to school for business management and stuff, something like that, or whatever the case is. And they're, they're going to these higher end schools and coming out with, you know, upwards, you know, over, you know, like, one hundred thirty, one hundred forty, one hundred fifty thousand dollars debt, right? Um, and so, because it looks good, yes, right, to say that you came from this institution versus that institution or whatever the case is, it's kind of like same thing. It's like you know buying a car. You know, it, it looks better if I if I drive, you know, what I'm saying a BMW versus if I drive a Toyota. You know, what I'm saying it just looks better, sounds better when I'm having a conversation, right? Got it. Um, and so we can also make better decisions about may uh, maybe seeing our situation from when we're younger. And Cause of course hindsight is 2020, but since, since we're talking about it and there are young pe people on here, it's just saying, Hey, think about your situation beforehand. If you know, if your parents don't got it like that, you know, and, and if you know that you don't have it like that, then maybe, you know, depending on what you want to major in, take a look at that. And see, maybe I don't go to the higher school with thirty thousand dollars a year or, or forty thousand dollars a year stuff like that, right? You know what I'm saying? So I, you know, I just kind of kind of wanted to see what you had to say about that. Yeah, I mean, I went to a state school. Shout out to Stony Brook, right? I went mm -hmm. to, went to Stony Brook. One of the reasons why I went to Stony Brook was because all my close friends from kindergarten went there. Like my yeah, yeah, yeah. friends, you know, I'm still very cool with them. A lot of them went to Stony Brook. That was my reach school. Come to find out, that was the best idea, and that was the best move for me. You know, financial mm -hmm. friends who went to mm -hmm. St. John's, who went to Hofstra, Howard, Fordham, NYU. I don't knock anybody for whatever path they say. I'm saying in general, though, I don't care what path you do. You're an adult. Here's the one thing that irks me. People complain when they come out of college that they have too much student loan debt. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where I'm going to piss people off. You didn't know how much this shit was? <laughs> because you signed the paperwork right <laughs> you signed it you signed your mm -hmm. name now maybe your parents helped you co-sign grandparents uncles, guardians doesn't make a difference someone mm -hmm. helped co-sign that debt but you signed it you saw the bill mm -hmm. they sent it to you so when you came out now you're going oh this shit's a scam <laughs> it was mm -hmm. always <laughs> it wasn't it was our radar was off i'm as guilty as anybody bro this is why i can say this to people mm -hmm. right? when i came out i was like yo I, I owe people money think about it you went four years of just having fun in school i dormed at school you walk into class with slippers on and shit and then you come out making like 10 50 an hour and now mm -hmm. there's this bill for 300 dollars in the mail mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this, so for anybody who's watching who may have not done this already, understand mm -hmm. what's coming. For right. those of you who are already here, welcome to being an adult. But I'm mm -hmm. saying, regardless of where you're at, get rid of the debt. Student loan debt is one of the few where you kind of pay your way to, ed to educate yourself. That's one of the ones I say, okay, fine. If you're going to take one on, you do that. But don't, just like buying a house, right? So it's one of the things where people say, you got to buy a house, you got to own land. Well, you got to own the right land, right? Mm. If you make 50 grand a year and you try to buy a house for a million dollars, you're, you're screwed, right? Mm -hmm. If you try to get a good education and you go to, you know, Penn State and you come out with 200 grand and you only make 40 grand, you're screwed. That happens a lot. That happens a lot, bro. Like I have friends who were, went to school for nonprofit have they yeah, have their you know the master's degree and things like that, and then they're coming out as like a case manager making like thirty five thousand, and they and they in debt like like two hundred, and 
and, and they're angry at work every day and you wonder why and, and then it affects you know the clients that they have the underserved who are coming to see them and they're angry yeah they're, it, so it's like you know so those are things that 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 happen too um but i think we really got to um take take a look you know what i'm saying and also even if your parents co-sign for you you got to think about it like this cuz some people say hey you know my mom and dad co-sign this and that and the third right you got to really think about it god forbid something happens to your parents got it you you have to pay that too so so yeah you, you cuz things happen in life un, un, unforeseen things happen you just never know so whatever you sign you got to make sure that even after that that you can still pay it too. Yeah. Cuz some people take it for granted. Oh, dad got it. Oh, grandma got it. Mom got it. Oh, we all good. No problem. And then God forbid something happens that you don't expect. Yep. You get this bill and now you're up the creek. You know what I'm saying? So think think about it. Think about it this way, right? Even school mm -hmm. just even school debt. Look how easy it makes society for you to take on debt. Mhm. Mm think about it. Mm -hmm. Until the Obama administration, I remember when we was on Stony Brook, and for people who went to Stony Brook, they're going to remember the zebra path in Stony Brook. The zebra path in Stony Brook mm -hmm. towards, like, you know, the H quad and stuff like that. And I remember them yeah. lining up all the credit card companies waiting for you to come by as a nice fresh meat freshman. <laughs> fresh meat freshman. For, um, credit cards. It was under the Obama administration where they stopped doing that. They stopped, mm -hmm. you know, doing predatory practices for people to take on credit. These people were signing up kids with no job, no income, no credit at all. Credit cards that American Express, MasterCard, Visa, doesn't make a, it doesn't make a difference what it is. They were signing mm -hmm. these people up with interest rates in the 20s and the 30s, knowing these kids could not pay it. And what did you go do and swipe your card up when you were in college? You went and swiped a bottle, new sneakers. Mm. <laughs> Right, can't be stupid, can't be out here looking stupid on campus, and then boom, mm -hmm. they make it so easy. When you go finance a car, they sit you down, they give you water, they give you chips, they throw in all this extra kind of bullshit until you sign the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Right, when you buy a house, they give you a bunch of balloons when you're sitting at your realtor's office, right? Why the hell is she giving you a bunch of balloons when you sign the paperwork? She's happy that you, you bought a house? No, she's happy she made the commission off you. Mm -hmm. and your debt for the next 30 years. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And then mm -hmm. you want really extreme. Look at the payday loans, right? We talked about it recently when I sent you that article. The payday loans that are in some of these really impoverished neighborhoods. These guys are charging 200%. You walk in, they give you the loan, and you can never pay it off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Practices. So our, the one thing I would tell everybody to think about is why is it that our society makes it easy to borrow money? It's because that's part of the way they make money off of you. Right. So my 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 brother's in the comments and he said banks will give you a loan for school and and the government will guarantee it. Um but if you went to the bank for a small business loan at 20 you'll get denied. That's very true too. Yeah. Um and think um, if if you mm -hmm. have, if the federal government guarantees the loan Right. So this is what's happening now under the Trump administration. Whether you guys like him or not, those little guy don't really care. But what's happening under the Trump administration is the loans that are guaranteed by the federal government they put a pause on during the pandemic. Right? They did that. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens with that? Right? When you take out a loan, usually the federal government loan is not enough if you go to these expensive schools. So you have to take uh -huh. Right. When you take out the private loan now, that's the one that's not guaranteed by the federal government. And that's the one you're still liable for now. They got to make money. Yeah. Off. Right. So M. Savar 360 said we weren't all aware. Not everyone really knew what that meant. Many of us are breaking a generational um, uneducational wealth. Yes. True. Mm -hmm. yeah. True, true, true. Um, so yeah, so I, I think when it comes to school, it's like you said, you know, it, it's necessary, you know, but also just kind of think of what of what school you that you really need to go to. If yeah. you're not getting scholarships, you know what I'm saying? Um, can you afford it? What's the reason for you going to the school if you can't afford it? Yeah. Is it to floss, to say, to look good to your aunts and uncles at the family reunion, at the parties, yeah. and for your, and for your parents to say, Oh my god, she's going here and telling her friends this but yeah. you're going to be the one that's going to be in the debt. 
not them. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Now, if they're paying for everything, hey, hats off. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, just if, if, if you're on this live and you're getting ready or thinking about college, just, just really just think about what you're doing um, beforehand. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Strategize it. You know what I'm saying? Talk it over. Get a financial advisor early. You know what I mean? Have that talk. You know what I'm saying? Talk to your parents about it. You know what I'm saying? For real. Yeah, and, and, and something to consider. I still think that, and it's unfortunate that most people think this way, that college is probably some of the best times you'll ever have in your life because that's when you become who you are, right? Mm -hmm. Especially mm -hmm. when you dorm. There's certain transitions in your life. I really do think high school was one, college was another, and I do high think school, you, hit, right? and you hit your stride mm -hmm. in your 30s, in my opinion. Yeah. Because yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 30s, you really stop giving a fuck, like, no offense, but you really stop caring in your yeah. 30s. Um, so choose the right school for you, because I do want people to get that experience, but mm -hmm. don't, the experience doesn't pay the bills. Right. Okay? Um, so here's something, I, I'll give you guys, anybody with student loan debt, I'll give you guys an idea, okay? And I guarantee you, no one will tell you this idea, because it's against the conventional norm. For all of you that are working, for example, what you can do right now is if you have a 401k, you're paying a percentage of your, your income to your 401k. This is what you're supposed to do. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying usually your employer may match. So if your employer matches your 401k, go up to the point of your employer match and then don't contribute any more from there take all the extra money you've been putting towards your 401k and start paying down your debt. If you do the math, you'll be able to pay off your debt faster and then be able to catch up your 401k when you start maxing it out. See, most people don't max out their 401k. They just become accustomed to the spending habit. So that's something for folks to consider is if you have a 401k, take it easy for a second take the foot off the gas i'm not saying don't contribute anything contribute something mm -hmm. but take the extra money you were contributing to your 401k and start throwing everything you possibly can at your your debt and as that paid off it starts to free up more and you can do what you want dope so now of course when you have debt right now that affects or could affect your credit score. Of course, if you don't pay those things on time, brother. You know what I'm saying? So I know this is a bit, this is a big topic for you. Um, so I'm going to let you take it because I'll tell you my opinion on that in a second. But credit scores, I know you say it's a scam. We all know that. We all know. So tell the people why credit scores is a scam. Jesus, give me the strength. Okay. They're an absolute fucking scam. Okay. And I'm... The reason why they're a scam is this. You put way too much effort on a score. Think about what a credit score allows you to do. It allows you to buy things you can't afford. Ask yourself this question. Why the hell are you buying things you can't afford? And don't mm -hmm. give me the excuse, right? Do not give me the excuse that, oh, there's some emergency. The majority of people who are going to watch this video, the majority of my the people that I graduated with, the people that I've done these things with, the majority of them do not have a problem. They are not poverty stricken. So why are you paying for things that you can't afford? It's because mm -hmm. you lack discipline. Think about the only time you should be using a credit score. A credit score is just the ability. It's a numerical number that shows the lender you have the ability to borrow money. That's all it is, right? And think about what they, you're able to use your credit score for. Your credit cards, your car, your, um, your house, anything you want to use it for. And people put so much emphasis on it. But what mm. do you really need it for if you live a debt-free lifestyle? Mm. There is nothing. There is, there is, like, you can use it to your advantage. And most people, they put so much effort into a credit score, yet they know nothing about it. They don't know, for example, that 65% of your credit score is based on the amount that you owe in your payment. So what do these people do? They go open credit cards because they offer points. 
See, I can talk in this manner because I used to believe this. It's a scam. And this is coming from someone, I am not bragging when I say this, my score is above 800 it's been that way for a long period of time. But it doesn't mean anything to me. Why? Because I don't, I live debt free. It, it just is what it is. Think about it. You go, let's, let's say, let's take school out of the equation for a second. Sure. You go buy a car. You and me both bought the same type of car, right? Which would appeal mm -hmm. to us. That's all it was. It was the same car that appealed to us. I think you had the Scion and I had a bright orange. Yo, you car. remember that? Ah, oh, man. I remember the Scion. Yeah, you got to remember it. <laughs> yeah, I remember it, right? Mm hmm. I don't need to put anybody's personal business out there, but me and you probably both financed for a lease, mm -hmm. right? 100%. Now, what did that mean? Think about it for a second. And this is me holding myself accountable as well as you. What does it mean when you finance? That means that you were impatient enough to not save. Because mm -hmm. if you saved enough, you would have been able to buy it. But All because right, right. you didn't save, you went and borrowed money for something you couldn't afford anyway. Mm -hmm. right? It's funny. It's funny because my mom, she um, you know, she always used to say, you know, like small money add up to be big money, and she and she was like, what, and one time she wanted this, she wanted a car, and one of her favorite cars, BMW, I think it was, and and I watched her like she saved, and and mind you, she wasn't even making as much as me, I think, you know. And I watched it save bread, stack of bread, stack of bread, stack of bread. I think in three years she bought it. Cash money. Yes. That was just. Right. And you know the. the you know, but 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 also being younger, you also. You know what I'm saying? Like you. Are very impatient. You yes. know what I'm saying? Because it's like I don't have time. Like you know, I'm young. I gotta strike while the iron is hot too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you gotta floss early and often. You know what? You know what someone? So, here's what someone told me once. They said, "Joel, I bust my ass when I worked. I'm the one that worked 46 hours a week, close to 60 hours a week. I'm the one that was away from my kids. I'm the one that was away from my husband. I'm the one that sat there and gave up everything in my 20s. And now you're telling me that I can't go and splurge on things that make me feel good, right?" Sounds uh, legit, yes, right? I've heard that, that too. Uh -huh. Sounds legit. But what does it also sound as? And I mean this with no disrespect. It, it sounds like a kid. It sounds like a child. Because a child says that. Mine, 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 mine. I deserve this. I know it's wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway. It's a lot of discipline. And the problem is, is once we come out of college, think about it. When you come out of college, you've been... For 21 years, someone has been telling you what to do. Because usually you graduate college at 21, 21, 22, depending on how it goes, right? For the average person. So as a black person who's been behind the, the, the eight ball their entire life, who grew up in the hood, who never had money, the only people around them that were, that were rich were drug dealers. You did it the right way. You sacrificed. You're the one that went to school. You're the one that studied. You came out of college. You're the first in your family. You go get a job. And now someone's going to tell you, don't buy the car? Yeah, I'm the one that's going to tell you, don't buy the car. Because what happens, is since I've done it, I can tell people, you're usually arguing with emotions more than you are with mathematics when it comes to debt. Because right. debt gives you... Ability to buy something premature. Remember, debt, you know, debt has existed. Like I said before, debt has existed for thousands of years, bro. It's like mm -hmm. I said, I always like one of the reasons why I read the Bible from start to finish was I wanted to see what it said about money. I kept hearing these rabbis say everything that people know about money is in there. And what you realize is right off the start, right in the first five books of Moses, bro, it starts talking about debt. So this was <laughs> Thousands and thousands of years ago, it tells you after seven years, you're supposed to give, forgive somebody's debt and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. so I'm just telling people, when it comes to your credit score in particular, use it to your advantage, but don't become a slave to it. And I'll, I'll tell you guys this. Don't go into debt just to build up your credit score. That's dumb. 
right? And I don't mean that offensively, but that, that makes no sense, right? Let them keep the score, you keep the cash. Mm -hmm. Because if you have the cash to pay for everything, your debt score is going to catch up with you. Don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Right? I, so, like, okay, I'll leave you with this and I'll stop after. Okay. Hey, when you pay off your debt, you know they penalize your score? Yeah. What kind of, what kind of stupid shit is that? <laughs> right? You're no longer in debt. You show them that you can pay off your debt. You show them that you can responsibly um, pay it faster than the terms of the agreement. Aren't you someone that they want to they want to do business with? And what's right after that? They go and drop your score for a score you can't even calculate yourself. Hmm. So my brother said, as a community, we have to get out of get out of bad debt. Um, yeah. Because there's also good debt, revenue producing debt, such as multi family property units, and et cetera. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, you know, which, which, which a lot of people do. So, um, here's, yeah, go ahead. The, here's the one thing I would say to your brother if he knows how to do it, yeah, he's been doing it. Right? If he yeah. knows how to do it, don't let me be the one to tell you not to do it. But I'm talking And, and, and he's in the right place, too. He's right. in the right place. So, Atlanta's the right place. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I, but I'm talking as black people as a whole, I think you understand what I mean. As black people as a whole, to me, there's no such thing as, as good debt. Because mm -hmm. we're too busy behind the eight ball. Since the time mm -hmm. we grew, since the time we were are born, we're always mm -hmm. behind the eight ball. Right? So debt affects us more. Recessions affect us more. Economic downturns affect us more. Credit card debt affects us more. So to me personally, in my opinion, mm -hmm. I would stay away from debt as much as I can. If you're using debt in such a way that I can borrow money and make money in such a way that the money that I make can pay off the money that I owe, that generates income, go for it. But for the majority of you watching, consult his brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The majority of you, including myself, including a lot of people who've been in school for years and studied finance, what normally happens, and your brother knows this, in 2008, mm -hmm. did the same thing. Right? If you ask your brother what happened in 2008, what happened? People borrowed money to buy houses and the, the whole thing collapsed on them. In mm -hmm. the 2000s, they borrowed money to buy tech stocks and the whole thing collapsed on them. A few years ago, we talked about this. A few years ago, they borrowed money to buy Bitcoin. Have you seen anybody say buy Bitcoin recently? <laughs> no. So your brother's right. If it works for him, do it. But I'm saying do that when you're in a position to take the hit. Right. And a lot of times you can only not only do that, but for us, a lot of times we, we really can benefit from it is when we're already debt free. Originally. Yes. Then it yeah. can work for you. But if yeah. you're building debt on top of debt, on top of debt, on top of debt, on top of debt, then, you know, as you said, it's going to put a, a stronghold on you. You know what I'm saying? It's going to suffocate you. Um, yeah. And debt and debt is suffocating, you know, from whether you're... But the, the crazy thing is, even when it comes to school loans and mortgages and things like, like that, student loans are strangling a lot of people, right? Yeah. But people are so happy to get in, to get their first home and that and that it's com it's viewed completely different. Yes. Why? It's because it's like what you said earlier. You can see the fruits of of your labor quicker yes. with the house. Yes, and it makes so, you feel good too. Uh, well, look, <laughs> and like I said, it's a it's such a be finance is about behavior. It is not about mathematics. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it till I'm blue in the face. So when I, you know, people don't call me to ask me their opinion before they make a big purchase because I'm the one that's going to shoot them in the foot. They tell me after, like, yo, I got a new car. They will never tell me at the time what's happening, specifically right. because it's behavior, right? You want to you mm -hmm. feel good. You understand mental health more than I do. What does it do to a psyche when you feel good? It, 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 it makes you, it, it, it lifts you up from a space that you don't, you, you don't want to be at anymore. But what we don't realize yeah. is that things don't help. Mm -hmm. They temporarily yeah. put a band around a gun wound. So I think it's, you can live your life, but you can also go about your business. Like you don't have to, 
you know, you can drive a Honda and still be smooth, man. You don't need a Benz coming out of college. Like, you don't need Facts. that, you know? Facts. And, and I, I'll give an example. We're in our 30s now. For a lot of people, you came out of school with student loans. You probably still got them. If not, they're, you know, you're close enough. You would have to probably, if, you know, you probably bought a car, and chances are you probably finance the car or lease it. If you're lucky, and I say lucky, I mean that, you bought a house. That's a mortgage. <laughs> and you probably have a credit card payment that's it's just lingering. You have the cash to pay it off, but you haven't done it yet. That's four different types of debt that's strangling black people. You see, I say it seriously now. It's strangling black people. And you wonder why we're behind when it comes to economic equality. All four of those things will never leave your life. There's a very good chance somebody's going to die owing somebody. That's not what life was about. Mm. So my thing is, what most people don't realize is that being debt-free sounds taboo. Mm -hmm. Right? They look at me like I'm crazy. I look at them like they're crazy. Because I've been in their shoes already. I know what it looks like. Yeah. I'm telling you, on the other side, I see. You asked me earlier in the beginning, what'd you ask me? How am I doing? Let me tell you something. No matter what happens in the economy, I have a moat, right? I have the foundation in front of me that I can take the hit no matter what happens to me because my expenses are low, my debt is low, I have a good amount saved. That gives me peace of mind. You know what starts to stress debt people out? Is when the economy starts to tank. Because if you lose a job, right. I can't pay my house, I can't pay my student loans, I can't pay my car, and I can't pay my credit cards. Now you have to start picking who gets what. Right. I'll, I'll then... There's a, um, there was a stat that came out. And I, I think it said in New York or in the United States. I'm not sure. You guys have to ch check me on this. But I believe it's New York. 50% of the people... Or, or no, it wasn't fifty percent. Twenty-five percent of the people who are renting right now, that had the forbearance on the on the not the forbearance, but the the extension on the, you know, yeah. being able to rent, that kind of stuff. Twenty-five percent of them are at the risk of being kicked out their house because they weren't able to pay their rent over the last couple of months. You know what the majority of those people were? Black. Mm -hmm. Now why can't wow. they? Pay is it just their rent? No. It's the fact that they don't have enough money to pay anything, including their right. debt. Right. And um, that's something that, that that's affects, it's like you said earlier, that affects your mental health, something so crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you have debt, and let's just say you have kids, even, even if you don't have kids or whatever, but if you're getting kicked out, now imagine you're getting kicked out, you and your child, because... You, because you can't afford the rent, you know what I'm saying, like or something like that, you know what I'm saying, and it causes a lot of stress, and then those things manifest to a lot of things for sickness, phys physical ailments, and sickness, and things like that, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and you wonder why like a lot of us have so many different, you know, black people have so many different diseases that are, you know, you know, for us, you know what I'm saying? Like like what they say is like like we suffer from a lot of different ailments, you know what I'm saying? And yes. wonder why. Yes. Stress. Yes. And it's stress. And it's it's one of the things where, you know, growing up in my household, you know, one of the things that was always contentious was money. It was always contentious in the household. And when you start to look at black households, it's always contentious. Right? It's always it's it's her money, my money and not ours. <laughs> <laughs> right it's it's always like that it's whatever you got whatever i got and all right you keep your shit on your side right <laughs> and one of the things that gets involved in it is is the debt part right because we feel that we've made it right we're married we have a car so if you have your car i have my how many people that you know have a one a one car household these days not many when I grew up, my mother didn't drive, but we had one little car in the house. Mm -hmm. Now it's you got your car, my car, and then we have the toy car. Like, like, like it's it's getting insane the amount of debt that we're taking on every single time. So, let me I'll pivot for a second. How do you get out of this? 
right? There's two methods that I've I've learned. Mm -hmm. One is called the avalanche method. The avalanche method is when you line up all your debt and you list the one that's the highest interest rate first. So that you may have to do some research and actually go through your debt and see which right. one's the highest interest rates to the lowest rate interest rates. And you line them up. The highest interest rate at the top, lowest interest rate at the bottom. And you start paying them. So you take all the extra money you can and you start paying off the highest interest rate debt. Once that's paid off, you move on to the second using the extra money that you had from the first plus the minimum payment from the second. And you keep going, keep going. And it builds an avalanche, right? You ever see a little snowball that builds, it builds, it builds, it builds, yeah, it builds yeah. right? So that's what the avalanche method is. The second way, what Dave Ramsey has been talking about people for God knows 30, you know, 20, 30 years at this point, which is the debt snowball. Same mentality, but instead of putting them in um, order of interest rate, you put them order in size. So the smallest is first all the way to the largest. Okay, wow. so you pick up the smallest one first, pay, make the minimum payments on the other. And then once that first debt is paid off, you move on to the second using the balloon payment from the first, the minimum payment from the second, you move on to the third, and you keep building, and you keep building, and you keep building, and you keep building. Now, I have to make sure I let people know this. Here are the advantages and disadvantages of both. If you use the avalanche method to pay off your debt, you will pay off your debt quicker and pay less. The problem with it is that you see no progress initially because sometimes the interest rate that's the highest may also be the one that has the most amount. So think of your credit card. Right. right? And it takes a long time to get to that. So the debt snowball method, you line everything up from highest to lowest. I mean, from lowest to highest. So you're right. going to see, you're going to see it immediately impact you. You're going to see yourself killing debt. You're going to feel good. It builds the motivation. It, it, it mentally puts you in a good space. But the problem is it takes longer to pay off your debt compared to the, the avalanche method. I don't care mm -hmm. which one you use. Just do it. Right. Get out of debt. Right? So, like I said before, you can use the method of the 401k, which is you pull the brakes back a little bit. Right? You press on the brakes a little bit. Take the extra money from your 401k. So if your 401k, let's say your company matches at 3%, you match up to 3%. Anything over that that you would have paid, you start taking that, pay off your debt. I guarantee you, you will catch everyone. People come up to you and they say, oh, well, if I don't contribute to my 401k, I'm not going to retire early. Let me tell you something. When you're debt free, you can contribute 19500 to your 401k. Why do I know that number? It's because that's the max number you can contribute to your 401k. When you're debt-free, you can do that. When you're not oh. debt-free, you can't. Right. So you can catch these people, you know, let them, they can run for five years on 3% contributions, and I can catch them in 10 years and fly by them, specifically because I'm maxing out my 401k. So I don't care how you do it, whether it's the avalanche method, whether it's the debt snowball, Get the hell out of debt and live debt free. My opinion, everybody has their own. No, I mean, first of all, those are incredible, um, incredible ways to um, pay off your bills, pay on and pay down your debt. Um, somebody asked, "What are your thoughts on savings and emergency funds?" Oh, so um, one of the things we talked about previously was the seventy thirty rule. Yes. Right. So the 70 30 rule is not my idea. I'm not taking credit for this under any circumstances. It was a motivational speaker, Tim Rohn, who was a motivational speaker back in the 80s and the 70s. Don't know who he is. He was a white guy who was one of the best motivational speakers I've ever in my life. So if you like Tony Robbins, you like these people, that was the guy who taught him. Okay. Anyway, what he, what he said was, you should be able to live off of 70% of what you make. Now, I get it. We've, a lot of us live in New York. It's not necessarily feasible. But that's what you be shooting for. And then the next 30%, you split up in threes, right? So 10% mm -hmm. should go to your savings every month. 10% should go to your investing. And 10% should go to giving. The 10% mm -hmm. to build up your savings, you should have enough to be able to withstand six months of expenses. Now, mm -hmm. 
among black people, in my opinion, this is a mandatory thing. Why mm -hmm. is it? In 2000, when the market crashed, who did, they, who did it affect the most? Black people and minorities. Mm -hmm. When the housing crash happened in 2008, who did it affect? Black people and minorities. In fact, in 2008, black people and minorities lost 50% of their net worth because of the housing crash. Mm -hmm. When every other economic recession we've had, the people who take the hit the most are black people and minorities. And if mm -hmm. you are a woman, listen carefully to what I'm saying. If you are a woman, you get hit twice. The reason why you get hit twice is they usually pay you less. And if you are a woman of minority, they usually pay you less even more. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you have a reason to save up to six months. And that's not including what you're going to make from unemployment. I'm talking about unemployment just helps you along the way. You have a severe hit just in case you need it okay so you need to have at least six months of your savings and a portion of your income every month should go to investing now one of these days like i think we talked about before we're going to talk about investing and i'm going to probably go nuts so so somebody keep um asking um i, I didn't see it before Fran, uh, francine dream said can we ask about trade lines i'm not sure if, if it's good or bad, or if I should buy a trade line. So, um, so I, I just wanted to, you know, get that out before, you know. I so I'll tell you, I'll be honest. If if I don't think you should be buying a trade line unless you have your six months of your expenses locked up, in my opinion, because from what I understand, it's not necessarily the greatest thing in the world, right? I'm not saying it's bad or good. Don't you know? Feel free to do your own research. My opinion is, I don't care what you buy, make sure you can withstand the hit. If you're making a capital expenditure to buy a trade line or buy these types of things that, uh, that move you in a direction to depart with your money. We talked about this before. Yes. Black people should be the cheapest people on planet Earth. Minorities should be the cheapest people on planet Earth, period. Why is that? Every one of these people who are going to watch this video can tell me all the oppressions of black people for the last 400 years. They can tell me about slavery. They can tell me about Jim Crow laws. They can tell me the civil rights of the 1960s. They can tell me the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, 2000s. They can tell me everything about Michael Brown. They can tell me everything about George Floyd. But the one thing that we keep forgetting is that the same system that has been oppressing us for the last 400, 500 years, we're relying too much on. Right, we should be the cheapest when it comes to us departing with a, a, a portion of our income. Um, so you gotta save. You and a portion of your income should go to investing, and I I won't go into too much debt with it. But your investing bucket is the bucket that's needed to grow your money, right? Your savings bucket is to preserve your money. Your investing bucket is to grow your money. Therefore, no matter investing doesn't just mean stocks. Right. Right. It means, you know, buying a house, starting your own business. Right. I was talking with you earlier, doing a podcast and putting the money up and falling asleep on the couch at 5 a.m. Shit like that. Right. Right. You know, <laughs> right. Right. So whatever it is for you to grow your money, your money makes money for you. Right. That's the whole point of that. So in my opinion, every portion of your check should go to saving, investing and ultimately Paying down your damn debt. So, so she, was, she uh, Francine replied and says, um, I, "I just want to improve my credit score. I thought it was a quick way." So, I guess the trade lines. Yeah. So here, here's the thing. There's ways to improve your credit score. I wouldn't necessarily do the trade line thing, though. Hear me out. Mm -hmm. So. One of the things you can do to improve your credit score, a lot of people want to improve their credit score quick. The yeah. first question I would ask her is why? Why do you want to improve your credit score, credit score quick? If you're not trying to buy a house immediately tomorrow, then you can wait. And here's why I say you can wait. Number one, if you pay your bills on time consistently, you'll improve your credit score. Number two, 
if you keep your balances low, you'll improve your credit score. Number three, if you get out of debt, your credit score will actually take a drop and then bounce up in the next couple months because you're getting out of debt. Number four, if you don't open any new credit lines, right? Credit lines meaning credit cards, right? Or right. any hard inquiries on your credit. A hard inquiry is when somebody from a, you know, is making an assumption about whether or not you're able to pay your debt, okay? Right. Get these people away from you. Don't go looking for new credit, new credit. Soft inquiries are the soft inquiries, like think about all the spam email that you get or the spam mail that you get for credit cards where they say you're pre-approved, that's soft. Yeah. The hard inquiries affect your debt. Dispute, um, one thing we didn't talk about, I'm just looking at the time now. One thing we didn't talk about was credit report. One of the first things that she should do is pull up her credit report. There's two mm -hmm. sites where you can do this. The first site is um, freecreditreport.com. In the name, you see how much it costs. It's free. If you go to freecreditreport.com, you're able to get all three credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. Review your credit score. There may be things on there that you're getting penalized for that you can now, you know, dispute the inaccuracies, for example. Okay? The second mm -hmm. one, is um, myfico.com. I like myfico.com because number one, you have to pay, but number two, mm -hmm. they give you an accurate representation of what your your credit score is, specifically because be they have some of the algorithm algorithms behind the scenes to calculate your score. What do I mean by that? So for a lot of you, you get, for example, credit scores. They give you it as part of your bank. Right. So I, let's say, for example, I have American Express. They'll give me a credit score once a month and say, oh, look, here's your credit score. OK. Mm -hmm. that credit score may not be what your lender uses. I'm going to say it again. The credit score that they give you on these free reports is mm -hmm. not the credit score that they use when you go and purchase something. For everybody that's ever purchased a car, you know what I'm talking about. You walk in the door. You think your credit score is 780. They look you dead in your face and say, nah, it's 720. Wow. Mm -hmm. okay. True. Number one. Number two, when they take your credit score, they don't have to use Experian or TransUnion or Equifax. They can weight it. They can go mm -hmm. to, they can pick one or the other. And do you know there's multiple FICO scores? The FICO score that you see on TV is the FICO 8 score. That's the eighth Mm -hmm. the eighth version, I should say, of a FICO right. score. When you purchase a home, for example, they may use a FICO 3, which penalizes you over time. So someone just asks, what about Credit Karma? Credit Karma is exactly the same thing. The Credit Karma score that you see is a FICO 8 score. That is not what the lender uses. So if you want to build your credit score, pay on time, mm -hmm. make sure you start reducing your debt, Make sure you go and look at your credit report, which is either you can get from freecreditreport.com or myfico.com. The myfico.com, you're gonna pay about 60 bucks for that. Mm -hmm. But you, for myfico, you can actually get multiple credit scores that show you what your credit score, they give you a credit score if you want to purchase a car, purchase a house, they give you multiple of them. But don't look for the quick fix. That, that's what I would say that's what I would say right now. If you're not so, going to buy a house right now, don't look for the quick fix. Just build it up slowly. So what she said was, her, uh, her response to you was, it's because it dropped in one month 200 points because she doesn't have credit due to one, due to one bill for $56. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. there could be multiple reasons why it dropped. So number, number one is if she paid off a debt that was really old, on her credit report, chances mm -hmm. are that, so it's one of those things where it's like, if they drop- She has, well, she said that she, that she, that she, that she has no debt. She said she no, has no debt right now. No, I know okay. that. What I'm saying is what, what she could have paid off was an old debt. When you pay off an old debt on your credit report, this is how stupid it is. When you pay off a cold old debt on your credit, they penalize you more because they have to reopen the books to figure out what debt you're paying off, okay? Here's what I tell her to do. If you have a credit card that you've been using for the last 10 years, every month, 
go and swipe a credit card for your gas. Never swipe anything on your credit card that you can't pay for cash the next day. And you slowly will start to build your credit score part up. But here's the thing. If she's debt free, I'm going to tell, I will tell her straight to her face. You can DM me whenever you feel like it. You keep the money. They keep the score. Because if you're debt free, you can start saving thousands of dollars a month and you will slowly build your credit score over time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we got about four minutes. So, Donna said also aligning to a line of credit that has a long history, for, for example, yeah. being added to a person's account who has a credit card with long uh, yeah. history, not the, the and balances kept below 30%. True. Yeah. Um, yeah. And my brother said, if you have a credit card already, then you can buy small items and pay off Im immediately, and that, and, and that could build your score back up pretty quickly. She yeah. said, I don't have credit um, and never owed a card. Well, so I mean, what I would suggest, so what I would suggest for you, uh, Francine, for you, for you to do is DM CFA Joe after this, um, and maybe y'all can have a private conversation about, you know what I'm saying, or, or maybe get with the plan um, of how to in increase your score quickly. Um, that, that could be something that you could do. So he, he said that you could DM him anytime, um, yeah. you know, um, and he'll work with you, Francine. So that's so, Joe, I appreciate you f for that, definitely. Um, but, but look, that's what these conversations are about, you know what I'm saying, to help each other, to help us as a community, to gauge, you know, where we're at and to find new information, you know what I'm saying? So, so this has been amazing, man. So listen, we're going to have a part three. Different, you know, it's going to be different subjects. Um, but like I always say, I, I, pre I appreciate you doing this because I know that you get paid to, to do this. Um, so uh, so definitely I appreciate you giving this joint away for free. Um, thank you, brother. I appreciate this, man. Um, Court said, what if we're good with payments but not seeing much of decrease because of in because of interest? Um, I mean, you got about 30 seconds. Um or you can just DM her or <laughs> pay more. There, there, oh, there it is. Pay more. Um, so, you know, this is our money management series on conversations of the heart. I do appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you doing this with me, bro. Um, you know, the community needs it and, and they need more people like you. You know what I'm saying? To keep putting this word out for free, bro. Um, and just giving it to the community. So, again, bro, I appreciate you, King. Thank you so much, bro. Appreciate you, man. My pleasure, man. All right. Everybody, tune in the Courts Court, too. She's amazing. Yeah. Word. All right. You're my brother. Peace. Absolutely, brother. Have a good one, man. Take care. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, another episode coming up on Friday. Yo, stay tuned, y'all. Thank you. Peace.